Hi, I am Shalamaik Agwala. I'm glad you are watching Ivam channel on YouTube. Now, I have just a question for you. Have you subscribed to this channel? You have? Great. Thank you so very much. Oh, you have not. What are you waiting for? It's simple and it is free of charge. Just look for the subscribe button on the screen. Click that button, then click the notification bell beside it. That's all, you are on. Then you'll be able to receive real-time updates whenever we upload fresh contents on this channel. Don't forget to tell your loved ones to do the same. Thank you so very much. God bless you. I am Shegun Shegun Pusari from Esas Compound in Ofa. Currently, I live in Ilorin. I am a surgeon, an ear, nose, and throat surgeon. And I work currently also at the University of Ilorin Teaching Hospital. I am an embodiment of grace. And I used to pride myself as I am a product of mercy, embroidered and beaded with grace. Circumstances that surround my birth, very, very simple. My mother is a, a tailor, she's retired now. My father was a teacher, there is no record of marriage between my mother and my father. My mother had to run to meet my father, who was everything a rascal in town. One key thing that we need to know also, talking about product of mercy, was that when my mother ran to meet my father, of course, you know, before you have to run to meet someone, uh, it means that both families didn't agree. So she got pregnant and they were visiting one herbalist, alpha or whatever, where they normally get their own powers. So they gave my mother a ring. And at the sixth or seventh month of that pregnancy, she said she was going to the toilet and she was toying with the ring. And then the ring fell off. Lo and behold, she lost that pregnancy. Thank God that one was not me, Shebu. So my father said, okay, you don't want me to marry this woman, you will see. So he went in for another one. My mother got pregnant. And at the time of birth, when it was to, time to name me, my father was, I, what is his name? He said his name is Shegun. Is it Olu Shegun? Ade Shegun? Ogun Shegun? He said, this boy's name is just Shegun. That he's going to Shegun show Shegun again. I didn't know that I was actually given a name to fight through battles. Because you don't become a victor except you go into battles. So my father, my father had given me the victory earlier on. I didn't know. So he named me Shegun. So they started calling me Shegun, Shegun. I'll quickly add one thing to that.
So they said this man is a rascal. We will see whether the marriage will last 10 years. This thing caught up with my father. He left Elisha to Lagos looking for greener pasture. When I was, I think, age eight or nine. And he never came back until he died 23rd of October, 1993. So at age eight or nine, uh, it's like a boy that was living in ghetto. They now moved him to GRO. So I went for holidays with uh, my uncle. I call him my uncle now, my, the elder brother of my father. But you know that time, you can't say uncle. He's my father. This man trained me till I became a doctor. Passed on just last year. So when I got to him, I think God just made him see the prospect in this young man. So my uncle said, are you going to leave? I said, yes. Then he put me in United Missionary Church of Africa, primary school in Bashita. And I ended up in that church many years after. Product of mercy. This is to tell us that God has been preparing so many things for me from birth. Immediately I was named. He had accepted me and he's now tailoring my way. Like that. So when Alaji said, you are going to live with us and I accepted, they got me school uniform. Mama of the house now. That is my uncle's wife. You know, you don't call your uncle's wife also. Auntie is my mother. Up to now, I still call her mommy. She said, now that you are going to live with us, whatsoever I do for you, you have to just take it like that, or else you will go back to your mother's house. But they did so well. They trained me. Imagine you having a boy from ghetto, and you are training that boy in a GRE. They did all they could to make sure that I become If you look at the shape of my head very well, you can see it has about six sides. That's due to the what God has given me. It has six sides. So when we were in school, I take a lot of good marks and they call me Ego. And when they call me Ego, I tell them that, look, it's these extra sides that I used to beat them in school. So I relied so much on my intelligence. I will Memorize a book from A to Z. So I thought this was what was going to make me to become. In fact, I wanted to become a doctor. Thank God for his mercy. So, because he had mercy on me, he allowed me to go to the people that are buoyant enough to train me. No other person could in our family. And I gave them a lot of wahala. All the youthful vices that you can think of. Is this stealing? I was involved. Uh, I don't do much of gangsterism because I'm a very fearful person, very coward and conservative. I got to secondary school. I went to government secondary school, Mara. I was still rely on this, my intelligence. At the time of school start, my result didn't come out. And it was time for me to go and repeat in that same school. When I got to the school, the principal said, ah, why are you coming now? I said, I didn't get my result, so I want to repeat. He said, okay. Then he said, but you passed. Ah. I said, okay. So he gave me my result. All schools, they've closed. We ran to Bida. We ran to um, uh, Lagos. At that time, my father was in Lagos. 
He didn't see me from age nine until when I finished my secondary school. So when I got my result and I went to meet him with my uncle now, my dad, my allergy. He said the school I want him to go is Baptist Academy, Banikuru. I started my A-levels in Baptist Academy, Banikuru. And I was a very playful person. Ghetto, GRE, Lagos boy. When it was, that was the first time jam was started in Nigeria. I said, no, I'm not ready to take jam. All my friends, they took the jam, they, they left. I said I wanted to finish the A-levels. Only for me to finish the A-levels. I didn't pass the three papers. All the schools have closed. You didn't register for jam. Then, my uncle. So he saw my result. He took me to Professor Love Baba. Professor Love Baba is late now. At the University of Illinois. He said, ah. The only thing we can, every matriculation is done, but how can we do it now? It's better for this boy to start in remedial. I said, what is remedial? He said, it's like you are doing your, uh, ele, uh, your O levels again. I said, but I finished A levels two years. He said, that is the only way you can enter this university now. Or else you have to wait for one. The man said, don't allow this boy to wait for another one year. We don't know whether it will be useful for us or not. I filled the form in Professor Love Mboba's office. He took to the registrar's office. He asked me to go and join them in the class without admission letter. The admission letter came thereafter. And that was how I started. Remedia, 100 level, 200 level. Again, you know he has done A levels before. This boy was just playing. He had enough time to just roam about. I rely so much on this intelligence. I got to medical school. Max 49.97. 49.98. There was no strike, but it's me that was doing the strike. Pass mark is 50. 49.97 is not 50. So I couldn't pass. And I was repeating. Ah. So I now went to meet my mommy. My mommy now is the wife of my uncle. That mommy, I know I'm intelligent. I know I'm smart. I know that I'm playful. But these things that they are teaching us, I have done them before. They are not new. But I'm failing. Then she said another thing. You know, she's the one that told me that Bubu Timba she for Kofara money. She now said another thing that you want to know try that you'll be trying here and there. Maybe God will have mercy over your life so that you will not end up like your father. So where do I go? So through his own junior, her own junior brother and her own uh, junior sister, the sister is late now, they took me to a woman after uh, Ojagboro. And then I told the man that I'm failing in school and he did so many things, but my condition didn't change. I was still feeling. When we were so much young, we were asked to go to Ilekeo. They would write some things on the slate. They would wash it, they would ask us to drink it. The man would be beating us. So when they asked us to go for the Ilekeo, I would just go to my friend's place. So I would get back home. I'm not being taught anything. I don't know anything. But when I go to my friend's house, particularly the guy with the book, Njoko, when we want to go, the father will call us, say, come. He say, I want to pray for you. The father will sit up. God, please help these children. No? Let them do well in school. Then at the end of the day, we say, Luluko, Jesus. So I love to ask Komudoko 
so that we will go to their house. We will take rice and then daddy will pray for us. I know that once. So we always go. Kai Debo Mujoko now is my best friend and my best man. We went to the same secondary school, 472, 473. 472 is his number. We went to the university, 2194. I am, she is 2193 and 2194. So when I was failing, it was kind of the book that gave me the word, nothing is impossible. The boy that was named Shegu is now failing. So it's Wahala. I met my wife. But when I met her, I knew that this is going to be my wife. How? I don't know. I just had the instinct. So I gave her a Bible. Try and be doing this Christian way. I will be doing the Muslim way. Maybe God will have mercy over my life. She actually didn't know where I was coming from. But she came from a structured home. She came from a good Christian home whose parent believed in the Lord. Uh, her mother is so peculiar that she had only 14 baths with the first seven died. And when the next seven now began, she was the only female. So we have a mother, I mean her mother now, who is so rooted in Christ. It was time to now settle down. I can't be a doctor without settling down. I needed to be married. I had somebody. This is my girlfriend that eventually became my wife. Who constantly have been, I have this intuition that she's my girlfriend. I called Kyle Debo Gujoko, remember? And I called my friend, I will, uh, Dr. Suleiman. Come and look at this girl. They said, this one is your wife. So I ran away. Because I didn't want to make the mistake of my father. My father, I think, impregnated four women. My mother is number one. There's no record of marriage, like I said. So I knew that to really make it in life, I must not miss the marriage aspect. Remember also, I've been told that and I don't just want to be a doctor without having a good wife, particularly a responsible wife. But her own parents, they said, you can't bring a Muslim home. That is impossible. This her mother, they said, they fasted, they prayed, and it was time to go to church one, I think it was a midweek service. She came here to tell me this story. Mama said she got to the church and the pastor was saying, whatsoever God has joined together, let no one put us under. And what had been on their mind is their only girl going to marry a Muslim. But here God is saying that God has joined them together. How? Thank God when she got home, she spoke with Baba. I told you they believed in Lord. Baba said, if that is what God has said, please let's look for the young man. Let him come. So they told me through my girlfriend now. My parents want to see her say for where? Mercy. If I had run away, we are 31 years in it now. And it's like we got married yesterday. I would have missed it. I couldn't take her even to go and meet my own. Eventually, I saw no courage to go and meet them when I was working at Oshobo as a medical officer. Ah, no, 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 Okene General Hospital as a medical officer. So I went to Ikoi, I saw them with her photograph. And I met Mama. 
Mama said, Oh, I've heard about you. They say I should come and eat. No, this is what I've come. They say I've heard you, but let her father come. They asked me to come inside. I didn't go inside because I knew that he had said he's going to cut my leg. But the mama received me so well, but I couldn't go inside. So when Baba came, I greeted Baba. Mama said, this is the boy we are talking about, but he's telling me some things. So I asked him to wait till when you come back. Baba said, I am Jekka Wole. Followed Baba inside with Mama. He said, You see this photograph? They said yes. It's your daughter. They said yes. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, I want to marry. He said, they say we have heard about you. Go and bring that girl to come and say the same thing. Ah. She, she stays in Lagos. Eventually, she came home to ascertain the veracity of my statement. So that's how God allowed my wife's spirit to marry, for her to marry me. I took her home to go and meet my parents. My parents now, they are allergic and mommy Busari. You know the first time she entered that house, nobody greeted her. She just came in, she was greeted, everybody was just looking at her. Ah, so I could play. I said, this is the girl I said I want to marry. You. No, nobody was even asking me. I just took the lady and went out. So it's like this thing is not going to be possible. I didn't see myself having a marriage without them. This man has done so well for me. This man trained me. This man adopted me. This man did everything for me. Took me from a ghetto to a GRE. Now I'm a doctor. How will I ever refuse this man? But I can keep telling me that this is your wife. This is your wife. I don't know Jesus. So, but, uh, I don't know. This is your wife. I informed them that I was going to do this wedding. My wife's parents already knew that if I don't have people, they will still give me. But I'm still very fearful. Now, my mother does not stay with my father, my biological mother. In fact, she had married another person. I have two stepbrothers. So I was thinking I would be able to get support from my mother. My mother said, whatsoever everybody has done in the family, that's what I'm going to do. I said, well, you have missed it. Number one, they actually told me that you are my mother. I didn't live with you, so I don't know you. But if I make a headway in this thing, forget it. You don't have any child because she boom. She became worried. But there's nothing she could do. I took her to Lagos. My father was in Lagos then. She met my father. I told her, this is the girl I want to marry. My father said, eh, eh, eh. what is your name? Where are you from? What religion are you doing? She said she's from okay. She's from Ikoyuju. And she's a Christian. My father said, my biological father said, thanks be to God. This is my prayer for you. And he had never sat me down to say, when you want to marry you, don't marry from your town. Don't marry a Muslim. He never sat me down to discuss this kind of issue with me. Again, I became confused. But I knew something keep telling me, this is your wife. So I had that. In fact, when I told him again that I'm preparing for the marriage, he gave me 2,000 Naira, 1991. I was very angry with him. I thought it was 200 Naira. 
So I kept the money until after marriage, when we didn't have any money, I said, this man gave me some money. So I looked at where the money was, and I counted that I saw it was 2,000 naira. Head teacher gave me. That melted everything in my heart. And then, unfortunately, he didn't live too long to see how much I loved him. So he's added that whatever my elder brother does concerning your marriage is what I'm going to do. But just know that this is the person I want to marry. Whereas the people that are responsible, they say they are not interested. Two weeks to my wedding, mercy again. Mercy of birth, mercy of school, mercy of marriage. I think Elijah saw that we can't stop this boy. You know he has been giving shego. So they called me for a family meeting. Like I'm going to see I got you. The center square. He took all the elders in our compound, in this house compound. And Elijah being influential, once you are influential, you are worthy. Uh, you take some responsibilities and you impact some people. So he was able to tell them that, look, he has spent so much on this boy and he wants to disgrace us by marrying a Christian. In fact, no, see, daddy, daddy. I don't bring him, bring him so that we can talk to him. I was to go to a country. I went there with her. He said, eh -heh. Who is this? I said, it's my father. Your father? I said, yes. They said, hey, why are you now? My father that I'm talking about now is Alagio. My biological father is not there. They said, so why are you doing all these things? I said, what? They said, ah. I bought my little money. You didn't know that your father has come to tell us some things. Then I now stood up. I said, I now prostrated. I said, where are all of you? When this man took me in. When he took me and sent me to school. When he trained me. Where are all of you? So if I now offend him or he now offends me, do you think I will now tell anybody here what he has done? So I just prostrated and I just grabbed his uh, ankle. I lie flat. I said, Daddy, if I've offended you, please just, I will never say anything against you because I know what you have done in my life. All of them, I said, Ah, Alaji, F for region, my now. F for region. F for region. I didn't know where that wisdom came from. Mercy of the Lord. So the man couldn't say anything. He said, it's just two weeks. They say, call the, call the girl. They say, they say the girl is with him. So they called my girlfriend. Now my wife said, You kissed her and said, Eh. Uh, that one said, Yes. He said, Ah. You know, a woman does not have a town. A woman does not have religion. In fact, a woman does not have any house. Wherever he goes, I will go. And so if he becomes Baba Lao, he says, a woman has no town. A woman has no religion. Wherever he goes, is what I'm going to go. He said this myself. Go out. Alaji. A folly do my the name Mercy came in. So we got married. I had known one thing about her that she menstruates maybe three or four times in a year. This one is not necessary that she will get pregnant. Talk less of having children. Remember what I wanted was a wife. I didn't want any children. I didn't want, I didn't know that 
I can raise any child. The way I was raised, I didn't, I don't think I should be able to do that for any other child. So I would just have all I wanted was a child, else a wife. We got married 15th of June 1991. And uh, she didn't get pregnant almost immediately. I was not bothered because I have gotten what I wanted. We married in the church. But I was not a Christian. But I have leaned more towards Christianity than Muslim. In fact, when we got married, I started going to mosque to establish my religion. I know that the only thing that was against me was that I had refused allergy. So painful, but there's nothing I can do about it. So I started going to the mosque. But every time I go to the mosque, I look at the people and I say, you don't belong here. But I needed to establish that fact, that I am a Muslim. And she was going to, the church, to her church. You remember, I've given her a Bible. So when she didn't get pregnant, I was not bothered. She was a little bit worried, but I don't mind. I'm a doctor, she's a nurse. Alice Bangbala invited us for a meeting in Bethel Church, Lagos, where Archbishop Benson Daosa was to preach. They had a crusade, three-day crusade. And the theme was, let's cross to the other side. Before that time, you know, I've been going to churches, but they keep saying things about me. But this one in Lagos, who knows me? So I was eager to go. Then she became pregnant. That became a worry for me. Who is going to name this child? Is he an Afa? Is he a pastor? Definitely not an herbalist. Now, are you a Christian or a Muslim? Okay, I am a Muslim, but I will not allow an Afa. So two issues now. How did she get pregnant? Who is going to name this child? Okay, can we let's go for the crusade? So I went for the crusade. Come and see that was again. Say things about my life. Ah, ah. The first day, the second day, it intensified effort so much. You can't be anything until you cross to the other side. Those long dark hands will, will, will pursue you until you cross to the other side. It's on the other side that you will have peace. Ah. I couldn't sleep. I didn't know the other hands was praying. Pregnancy advance. Who is going to name this child? How did this woman get pregnant? The third day, it was as if fire was coming out from that man's eyes. Idahosa, this is your last chance. This is your last chance. You have to cross to the other side now. I have started my journey in residency training to become a consultant. Again, this failing, failing thing has started again. In fact, the fourth time. Intelligence is not helping me anymore. I knew, I knew that I needed something that is more powerful than me. I know that I'm shaking, but I don't know that you have to activate the name. I remembered all these things that the Lord has been doing for me along the line that I can so but I don't know you have to activate it. So on that third day when the heat was too much, it was as if there is hot charcoal under my feet. I told her, I told my wife, I said, Emil Lawaju. She was just looking at me. I said, well, this is my own matter now. Uh, who is going to name this child? You say you want to become a specialist. We are not even moving headway. Ah. So, are you a Christian or a Muslim? Is, you will end up like your father. 
I just moved. Well, I got to the front. It was as if when I got to where Ida Hossa was, a big bag fell. I can still feel what I'm feeling. 1992, 4th of April. He said, Thank God you came. If you are not come, that's the end of your life. Thank God you came. You have to cross to the other side. Now you have crossed to the other side. And you will see, in fact, he's telling me that you should ask for three things. I didn't shut my eye, I was just looking at him. He said, ask for three things. He said, he will do it, and you will know. And you will come and give the testimony. What is testimony? Anyway, I'm here, I have peace. And tomorrow, come for baptism. I said, forget about that one. Forget about that one. I was answering him. In, I, did, I was not speaking out. He said, ask for three things. I looked around. I said, I want to become a specialist. And I've been feeling again. Please, help me now. Help me. Help me this good. Number two, and this is my father. If you can touch him the way you have touched me, I will be happy. You know, the only thing I like about him is that we resemble each other. Number three, I said, we are more than 2,000 here. I don't know whether you are going to use alphabetical order. Or maybe it's the first person that come. Whichever way, the line may be too much. Let me leave that one in case you chose to ask. I want to look across a one, two, so that you quickly answer me. So I say, forget about that one. Just these two first. I didn't know I was dealing with the limitless code. Up to today, that's one regret. But what would I have asked anyway that time? That was what was paramount in my life. We finished the crusade. So I gave my life to Christ. 4th of April, 1992. During Archbishop Bessie Dawson's crusade at Bethel Church, Aja, Lagos. So I went for the exam. I lo and I passed the exam. So I said, okay, the best is to go and quickly look at my father. So I left the Badon for Lagos. Well, we did the exam in Badon. I went to Lagos. I saw my stepbrother, Lego. Where is that? He said, Daddy has gone to church. I said, Church? Which church? He described the place for me. I got there. I did not only see my father in the church. I saw him in the front room. I said, Oh my God. I should have asked for that third one now. I, I want to say every day is a blessing. Maybe it's because I have grown. Every day is a blessing. There's no, there's no aspect of me that does not have a story. But maybe I should just add to some things. One is about that marriage. I did not know that I will ever have a child from a woman who does not menstruate. At least menstruates three or four times in a year. I did not know that God gave me a complete package. I did not have only one. I have three blessed children. And they are giving me peace. I don't know what would have happened if God I said, oh, since you didn't want this, we are not giving it to you. I didn't know that coming to Christ is a complete package. Complete package in your health. Complete package in your physical. Complete package in your relationship. Complete package in your career. Complete package in your finance everything so god gave me a wife my father's own marriage ended at eight nine remember i went to meet my uncle at age nine when we got married they told me point blank that you can't be up to 10 years because so when we did the first one the first anniversary i had become a christian so i wrote them letters congratulating them they said, this boy, you will not last 10 years. I had known that 
I do not only have to read the word of God, I must memorize it. And it's not necessary for me just to understand it. My own is just the zombie aspect. So I will just swallow everything like that. So I remember something in the Bible. They say he presented the letter to the Lazar. God, they said that I won't last 10 years. So. He said, just continue to follow him. I said, fine. I know the chief of those people died in the ninth year. Some years ago, we were in this house. Uh, somebody came with us. Major Sam Adeo, we came to visit us with one other guy. We didn't know that guy had a lot of money in his car. And armed robbers were pursuing him. So, when we had discussed, chatted, we even went outside, we were discussing. We didn't know armed robbers surrounded the house. We opened the gate, armed robbers entered. Ah, they say, Where is the money? Where is the, which money? I don't have any money. They say, No, 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 there's money in this house. I said, ah. They took us to this and they said, We should lie down. But, I had peace. One of my children was lying here, another one was here. They say, collected our and collected everything, collected our phones, they took so many things. Ah. They say, where is my? I say, which money? But then I had the administration. God said, in the beginning, there was darkness. And God said, let there be light. Ah. We had just put on the generator. Oh, so okay, so if there is darkness. These people will not be able to do what they are doing. Okay, fine. Then he gave me another. I said, he asked Moses to stretch forth the, the rod. And the sea departed. So it means that the instruction that he gave me to put off the light. If I don't do it, you are on your own. My mind was made up. Later on, my children were telling me that they knew that daddy was going to do something. But what he's going to do, they don't They are just praying for me. So I had immediate intercessors that I did not do anything stupid. Do. That I did not do anything stupid. But they knew he was going to do something. So I first of all moved to that end. Then I remembered my wife was upstairs. Ah! I said, no, you can't turn, you can't turn off this way. So they said, oh, yeah, go to your, let's go to your room. So we went upstairs. As we got upstairs, they didn't know where my switch was. So I just turned off the light. Everywhere was dark. The guy just shot. I still have the mark in the door of one of the rooms. Each time I pass to the, to the place, I say, God, thank you, you have given me a second chance. I refuse to change the door so that it will give me a constant reminder of where I'm going. I refused. The mark is still there up to today. God saved me from my untimely death. So my wife noticed that the, the, the room is dark and uh, everywhere they are saying, oh, yeah, 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 let's go, yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. That's how they left. So they left with the car that Major Ade will be brought. Unknowingly to Major Ade, there's money in that car. So it's the, the, the other person that came with me. I said, hey, they took my money. I said, you have money in this car? He said, yeah, two million. I, two million? You brought two million to this car. You know, all these people that have big money, if they are going with 100 million, you don't know. And, but when they were asking for the money, you should have said, I have money in the car. So that they would just give you. have allowed them to carry everything in the house again. But again, that's the place. If you walk with the Lord, if you just continue to obey Him, and you don't lean on your own understanding, He will not only direct it, He will establish it. When they packed everything like that, and they left, we were left with zero. It was why me? Why me? See, then I go to church, I do this, I do that, but why? Then I went to one of the meetings. Thank God for meetings, Christian meetings. I went to a full gospel meeting. Elder Francis Olatudi is late now. He said, if they don't rob you, who else will they rob? How will they know that you are a follower of Christ? Didn't Christ? Ah. I said, it's true. Ah. I'm a true follower. Let's see now. I'm a true. So I encourage myself in God. That one aside. Now, my career. When I became a consultant, I needed to have a place where I would do my work. I asked God, where do you want me to work? He said, where you finished. I said, but they said they won't take me there. He said, who? That's where you will work. Then we are coming back from Lagos, but I expect my wife said, oh, now that we are finished, where are we going? I said, where are we going? 
we are not going anywhere. We had applied for a plot of land for so many years. It was that same year. They said we should come and collect our form. I was telling the person, I don't have money. He said, who is asking you for money? We didn't pay up to 30,000 naira for where we are. I remembered Ernest Koladi, he's a professor, professor of pediatrics. He was giving a testimony one day, he said that God asked him to go and start a church here in Ilori. And then they say he can't work at the university. He said, why would they ask him to start a church when he knows that he's not going to give him work here? I said, it's the same thing here. Why would he give me a house, a plot of land, when he knows that we will build there? And they asked me to leave. As far as I'm concerned, it's not my problem. We stayed for nine months. The letter came in. That's how I became a consultant working here. And God has been helping my life. The spiritual aspect is endless. I, I will start from growth in reading the word. I know that I have to read the word of God. At that point in time, I don't have any business with understanding it. It has already worked for me as regards my exams. So I started reading. And because I'm a scientist, I find out also that the work that I am doing is not by mistake. He wants me to do some things through that work so as to attract other people. So spiritually, he has made me to be above denominations. Hey, you can't wear your shoe. You can't wear your cap. You can't do this. This is your unit. <laughs> I don't have any business. What would Jesus do or say? How about fasting? As a young Muslim boy, you dare not say you are not going to fast. But when I became a Christian, I gave my life to Christ, I saw the reality of fasting. Not that it's not only is healthy to make you healthy, it also does some things in the spiritual realm. So it's very easy for me to go into fast. That's encouraged my life to know. I don't neglect fellowship. And what about the growth and Christian ethics? Where Christian is, where Jesus is not magnified, I'm not interested in it. It has helped me to shape the way of doing things in my life. Most importantly, sir, I have peace. I have peace. I sleep well. So I am a product of mercy and be dead. Please, never ever again will I go back to the world. I am a living witness of Jesus' faithfulness, Jesus' loving kindness, Jesus' merciful kindness, Jesus' grace. If you have not known or given your life to this Jesus, I beg of you again, Surrender yourself to Jesus. I surrendered myself to him. And honestly, it has been from one level of grace to another. There is no day that I have regrets. So God Almighty will give you peace. Just surrender to him. Very, very simple. You know, I told you I went to the front. And I surrendered all. You just surrender to him. And I promise you, your life will never remain the same again. And if you are in Him, stay in Him. Stay in Him, stay with Him. Remain in Him. The Lord will help us all. In Jesus' mighty name.